It says, a particle mass 10 kilograms uh, falls from rest. Should have mentioned that. Falls from rest. That will become significant later. It falls from rest and is subject to a force of 98 minus 2v newtons where v is the speed at time t seconds. So that's, that's a function, but you expected that already, okay? So we're looking for these three things. <clears throat> momentum, and this is one of the reasons why I pulled it out, because we don't tend to think about momentum all that much. We are thinking a lot about forces and we forget that there's this thing called momentum, so you need to remember it. Term of velocity, we know how to get that, we'll show how we do in a second. And then a total distance that's traveled. Let's have a go. How do we begin? How do most of these kinds of Resistive motion questions begin. You start with a force, right? So here's where you start, right? Now, F equals MA, so you know what the left-hand side is going to be. That's 98 minus 2V. Okay? And you also know what the mass is. So that's 10. Now, we're going towards momentum. Momentum. So... How do we get to momentum? What's the closest idea to momentum? It's velocity, right? What's the difference between velocity and momentum? Mass. mass, good. So just like force is acceleration with mass, momentum is velocity with mass. Remember this, okay, so MV. So therefore, if I'm heading towards velocity, then how should I write acceleration? DV dt, right? I'm going that way because I'm going to have to do things with times later on, okay? And I want momentum as a function of time. Okay, so far so good. I'll divide through, rearrange. 98 minus 2v, I'll divide both sides by 10. That gives me 49 minus v on 5. You happy with that? I just divided by, yeah, okay. Now, where's the, what's the problem here? Um, I need to integrate with respect to... V, but this is not with respect to V, so that's why I take the reciprocal. Okay, so, so far so good. Okay, so now you integrate, you integrate, you get T on this side, and what do you get on the right hand side? V's on the bottom. So you get, there's, there's an extra factor of 5, right? The inside function, the reverse chain rule, is negative 1, negative. Okay. And then you get your log, right? Like so. Plus a constant. Good, because it's indefinite, right? So you've got to find your constant. It's not trivial to find the constant because you have this log function in there. So you have to say, from rest, right? When, <coughs> excuse me, t equals zero, v equals zero, because it's from rest. So you punch that all in, you get zero equals minus 55 log 49, right? There's v equals zero, plus my constant. So there's my constant. Okay, watch out. It's so easy to say, oh, initial conditions, sorry, initial conditions were zero. So I don't have to worry about the constant. No, you absolutely need to worry about the constant, not trivial. Okay, now we can pop that in. So here's our velocity equation, uh, sorry, our time equation, is equal to, I'll put the positive part first. Okay, so I'm getting there, slowly making progress. I need to get to a velocity equation. So I don't want time as a subject. What should I do? I should combine the logs, right? I think that's what that hand gesture meant, okay? So <laughs> 49 over, I'm hoping that's what the hand gesture meant. Um, I'm going to 49 over 49 minus V. Yes, thumbs up. That's equal to time. I will divide by 5 so that I just have the log over there. Now what? Re rephrase it. Rephrase it. Exponential equation. E to the, I'll write that as 0.2t so I don't have to worry about the fraction. Okay. Equals this. I want v as a subject, right? So this is upside down. So what should I do? I should take the reciprocals of both sides. So I'll put this over here. So that's my reciprocal right there. So far, so good. Okay, I'm almost there. 49 minus V. Yep. 
and then I just have to do a bit of flipping around. I think you end up with this. Yeah. Yeah, you have to do that. I did two things, didn't I? I subtracted 49 and then I reversed the order because I multiplied by minus 1. I think we've done, we do this so many times you can kind of get used to it. All right, now this is not a momentum equation. It's a velocity equation. Yes? Why did you add the The which? Yes. What mg? Is there any gravity in play? It doesn't tell you anything about up or down. Uh, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, yeah. But this is the force. This is the whole force, right? It's subject to a force of. That's it. That's the entirety of the force. Does that make sense? Was that the, is that what you're off by? I added energy. Right, yeah, okay. So, if it says it's subject, if this is the force, right, then, then that's, that's it. That's all there is to the force. Okay. Um, this is different to say, uh, it's not on there. If you have a look at question three, right, um, question three is different. It says a toy rocket of mass, you can't see it, sorry. Um, it's projected upwardly from rest by means of a force, right? So that means when that, they talk about that force, then that's just an upward propulsion and gravity hasn't been accounted for because that's just doing that part, right? Whereas this, when it says it's subject to a force of, that's it, full stop, no other forces. I guess you could say that's the resultant force, okay? All right, so hold on. We were mid-idea. What do I need to change? I have to multiply by mass, right? Because I don't want velocity. I want momentum. Right? So, almost. We don't, add, we don't add in mass. We multiply by mass. And mass is 10, which gives you this. Done. Okay. Very quickly, let's go through parts two and three because they're relatively simple. I'm looking for a terminal velocity. And this is, this is if you get to this point, Terminal velocity is extension one stuff. How do you get a terminal velocity out of this equation? Good, right? So you're really saying the limit as t approaches infinity of the velocity, right? And you can see this is going to be on the denominator. It's going to shrink to zero. So you're going to get 49 times one minus zero, which is 49 meters per second. That's good. Okay. Part three, last one. We need a total distance, right? in the first five seconds. So that's from time equals zero to time equals five. So how are we going to do this? What tool are we going to use? Think you've got a zero and a five. You've got boundaries, right? So total distance, you just go not to five, right? Of velocity with respect to time. There you go. Okay. Now I don't think it's all that many lines. You've already got your velocity equation here. Take that 49 out the front from 0 to 5 of 1 minus e to the minus 0.2d with respect to time. Okay, you can help me. We can all do this together, right? <coughs> Even knowing nothing about the situation. What happens when I integrate 1? You get t. What happens when I integrate this? Plus, plus the double negative, 5 e to the minus 0.2t. Okay, you pop in 0. And five, it ends up not being trivial because the z the five boundary, right? You're getting five plus five e to the one. one. Minus one. Minus zero plus five e to the zero, which is five. Right? So you can't you can't not do either of these sides. These will cancel, right? So you're getting forty-nine times five over e. Over E, yeah, which is like 90.13 some, some blah, blah, blah. So you round off. 